Welcome to another edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. Here on our fifth series going through the whole Bible in the last 38 years. And we are in Isaiah chapter 35, beginning in verse 1. And remember, too, that the New Testament of this fifth series is completed and archived along with the Old Testament books that are done and the previous four series. They're all there at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the BibleVerseByVerse.com, where you can go and choose, click, and listen. Study from four complete series going through the entire Bible Going on five, all you need is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. Again, that's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 35, verse 1. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Now this is talking about the future glory of Palestine, of the Israelite nation. There are big changes coming, not just for that area, but for the entire earth and for God's people who will live on it forever and ever, under the lordship and kingship of Jesus Christ. The desert will blossom as a rose. I used to go out to Arizona. Well, I've been out there a few times. I've spent several years, but when my sister, my older sister and my brother-in-law were alive, they lived out there, and, and I went out there, and I would visit them. And I'd be out there for maybe a week, and at first I loved it. Uh, yeah, I love the cactus. They were down in the southern part of Arizona. The cactus, it was like walking into a John Wayne movie, which I love. So it was neat, and it is neat. I got to tell you, when I got into town, the dusty, dirty, brown, it got a little sickening. I liked it out in the country, but I was ready to come back to Wisconsin, to be honest with you, where it's green and... There are flowers, and it's pretty, and it's hard to imagine when you're out there, the desert blossoming like a rose, but God says it's going to happen. And notice, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. So someday the desert lands of the world are going to be filled with flowers. They're going to be like gardens. I hope, they, I hope God leaves some desert because I do like southern Arizona. To a point, <clears throat> you know, I'd like to move around a little bit so I'm not stuck in it all the time, but it is neat, but... A garden sure is beautiful. And the cross of Christ is going to be responsible for taking that wilderness and turning it into a beautiful spot. And that's all across the globe, too. Imagine some of these deserts that it's nothing but white sands for miles and miles blossoming like a rose, a garden. That's going to really be an upgrade in that, those places. Verse 3, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. So God is telling his people to hang in there with him. Hang in there. Stay the course with Jesus because, listen to what I just described, I'm going to do with this earth and you're going to be a part of it. It's going to be worth it. Hang in there. Be faithful. For say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. God says, be brave, be brave. Put up with the trouble. 
because of your devotion to me, because the trouble is not going to last forever. God says eventually he's going to put an end to it, and it's going to be replaced by good time. So just hang in there. God knows that we need something to look forward to. This is why communism and socialism doesn't work. It fails everywhere it tries because the workers are supposed to go and they're supposed to give their best and be productive and be imaginative and and be creative. And then they give their paycheck to some slug at home who's too lazy to work. Sorry, that's not going to work. It's unbiblical. God knows we need something to look forward to, whether it's a fair paycheck or these wonderful promises of a better life if we live for Jesus and put up with whatever we have to put up with in the, in the process. Five, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. So it's not just planet Earth that's going to be revitalized and and just so vastly improved. It's not just going to be that, but you folks who are sick and disabled, you Christians who are blind and deaf and lame and suffer from all other problems. I, I don't care. Arthritis. I've got arthritis in my knees. My son has arthritis in his knee and in his ankles and someday it just it pains me to watch him try to walk and he used to be such a fast runner when he was in school and playing ball and stuff and god is saying yeah the earth is going to be renewed but so are you that those pains that you experience that blindness that deafness the the inability to walk or whatever your problem might be it's going to be gone everything's going to be good including you see how he's given us something to look forward to if we are christians honestly it should be enough the fact that we can fellowship with our creator and our god through jesus christ through the word of god in prayer that's just a wonderful great exciting thing that's what keeps me teaching the bible after 38 years I get the fellowship with God, and I hope you do too. It's fun. But beyond that, there's these wonderful things to look forward to, which God obviously thinks it's important for us to understand, to know about. Seven, the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of jackals where each lay There shall be grass with reeds and rushes. The hot desert sands are going to become a cool, clear water after Jesus makes all things new again. Verse 8. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others who... Whoever walks on the road, although a fool shall not go astray. This is pretty neat. There will be a holy road. In other words, people will do things God's way and not the devil's way. That's what this is talking about. Obedience to God, submission to God. And as a result of that, enjoyment of God. Because there's nothing better than when God's people live holy and therefore enjoy God to the utmost. So even those who don't know a lot can make the most out of their life if they walk the holy road, if they do things God's way. You don't have to be a genius to enjoy your life. Just walk with the Lord. Nine, no lion shall be there. Nor, any, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. There will be dangers on the holy road. There will be no dangers on the holy road. The saved will walk in it. 
God will guard us. And he promises to do that today. He who abides under the shadows of the Almighty will be kept saved. God talks about it in Psalm 91, a whole list of things that he protects us from. Verse 10, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Those who have persevered with Christ will feel at home, perfectly at home, comfortable, normal in eternity. I don't feel normal being in this world. And with every day that goes by, I feel less and less normal because this world gets worse and worse. And if you don't think it does, then you're not reading your Bible enough. And you're comparing it to something other than what God says is right and wrong. Because when you compare it to what God says is right and wrong, to what his word teaches, you can't come to any other conclusion, if you're honest, but that this world is getting worse. And if you're a Christian who loves Jesus, you feel less and less at home in this miserable place. But those who have persevered with Christ in their faith will feel at home in eternity. They will not feel like an outcast any longer, like they do in this life. God's people will be happy and will never be sad again. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and God's word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Write a note. Put it on your refrigerator door in your bathroom mirror, reminding you to pray for me and God's word and scripture verse by verse. And every time you do, you're such an important part of this ministry. It is your prayers, my prayers, combined with the straightforward teaching of God's word that is a dynamite combination that will save souls from hell and sanctify Christians Draw them closer to Jesus. So pray for me and God's word. And also when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. See you next time.